Hello, this is Artemis on the Square Anime. Today I'm reading Chapter 8 of Viridian, Suspicions, by Silver Mist Anime Lover. Hope you enjoy! Shota wasn't sure what to expect from this year's crop of students. Last year he'd expelled his entire class, and he wasn't above doing the same to this one. He was already in a bad mood, and he blamed Viridian wholeheartedly. The idiot had gotten himself seriously wounded about a week ago when they ran into his crazy stalker, and he hadn't been replying to anyone in the group chat. Shota had been unable to find him in any hospitals or clinics, meaning the guy was either being treated by someone privately, he hoped, or was doing it himself, again. He hoped Viridian had just damaged his phone again. Maybe Shota should get him a hero grade phone instead, those were durable as hell for this exact reason. With a sigh, he fished out his phone to send the vigilante another text. Let me sleep. At Viridian Chaos. I swear to god, if you don't reply to one of us, I'm going to hunt you down after school and drag you to the goddamn hospital myself. As if he hadn't already been driving himself up the wall searching every crevice of Mufasu he knew. He even searched the south side each night. Fury. Still no sign of him on my end either. Shota wouldn't admit it out loud, but he enjoyed the man's company, and possibly even considered him a friend. Not that he'd tell anyone that. So, knowing his maybe friend was hurt somewhere, and the fact that he hadn't seen him out on patrol for several nights, put Shota in a pretty foul mood. His fuse was short enough without having to deal with a bunch of unruly teenagers who think they're the hot stuff. He eyed his class from his position on the floor. The fluffy-haired kid, Midoriya, had noticed him instantly. That put Shota on guard, because he was in stealth mode, the kind he used on underground missions. Nobody noticed him in stealth mode. Seriously, what is this kid? He carefully nodded in acknowledgement of the bat before he stood up, garnering the attention of the rest of his class. Eight seconds. It took you all that long to settle down. Time is precious. Do not waste it, mine. He sent them all a level look, climbing out of his comfortable warm sleeping bag. My name is Aizawa Shota, and I'll be your homeroom teacher for the duration of your time here at UA. He pulled out their gym uniforms. Now put these on and meet me outside on the field. With that, he walked out, stuffing his sleeping bag into his pocket, because Hizashi was amazing and got him the kind that folds up into the size of the phone. As he made his way outside, he felt his phone buzz. Viridian Chaos. Sorry, I've been offline for a bit. My phone got damaged when I got hurt. No need to worry. I'll be back on patrol within a night or two. I didn't even have to stitch myself up this time. And erase it. It's not like you could find me, even if you tried. Shota let out a breath of relief alongside a sigh of irritation. Fury. Shota hid his smile in his capture weapon as he pocketed his phone and waited for his students. That was one weight off his shoulders. Maybe he wouldn't expel his entire class. Maybe. Midoriya was the first kid out there, it had taken him only a minute or so to come running out to meet him, and Shota noticed something was slightly off with his gait, like he was hurt. He raised an eyebrow. Though he'd implied that time was of the essence, most kids didn't pick up on that. Midoriya, once again, seemed to be the exception. I have a feeling I should get used to this. He impatiently shifted from one foot to the other as the other 19 students slowly trickled out, talking amiably amongst themselves. He resisted the urge to glare or sigh. 
He started speaking, giving his usual speech about how the system was illogical for disregarding quirks and pretending everyone was equal. One girl, Uraka, if he recalled correctly, had the guts to interrupt him and ask about orientation. We don't have time to waste on pleasantries like that. I've got three years to make heroes out of you, and every minute counts. UAA is known for its free form education. This applies to the teacher as well. This means I can teach you however I want, and I don't have to stick to the government issued standards. He waited for a moment to make sure nobody else was going to interrupt him. You're familiar with these tests. You've been doing them all your lives. Ball throws, endurance tests, grip tests, toe touches. This time, you can use your quirks. He called up Bakugo, the kid with the second highest score in the end students exam. Normally he'd call up the kid with the highest score, but Midoriya was quirkless, and thus pointless for the purpose of this demonstration. He watched the familiar looks of awe as the children realized they'd be allowed to use their quirks however they saw fit. This is going to be so fun! Ashido squeedled, making Shota twitch. Oddly enough, he noticed Midoriya sent her a glare of his own. Fun? You think this will be fun? Alright then, let's up the stakes. The person with the lowest score across the board will be expelled. He smirked into his capture weapon as the class dissolved into panic. Midoriya clenched his fists in... Was that anger? Determination? No, this was something more... Desperate. Before Shota could look any deeper into his student's unusual reaction, his ears picked up on someone crying about how unfair the whole thing was. He was about to open his mouth when he heard Midoriya laugh. It was a dark laugh, humorless. It sent a chill down Shota's spine. Unfair? Hate to burst your bubble, but life is unfair. You think hurricanes and earthquakes are fair? Bombings? Villains? Listen, I know you- We're kids, but that is no reason to be so naive. As heroes, it's our job to make things fair. We take the brunt of unfairness so civilians can rest easy and pretend life is kind, and they can stay blissfully ignorant of the pain and death we'll face every day. He must have noticed that the class was staring at him either wide-eyed or in complete disregard. He's right, Shota spoke up, startling the class. He wasn't going to lie. The kid's speech worried him more than he was willing to admit but he was damn good at keeping his expression neutral, so he decided to pick up where he left off. It's a hero's job to level the playing field. Villains won't let you off go easily just because you're having an off day. You can't take sick days as a hero either. Once you debut, you're in, and the only way out is retirement or death. He made sure the kids understand that at least heard him, even if they didn't understand that yet. He ignored the eerie stare of Midoriya, how those eyes understood what he said, because it made his concern for the child spike up again. Without further ado, he started the assessment. He'd honestly expected Midoriya to lag behind a bit, what with him lacking quirk, not because he expected him to necessarily be dead last, because there were plenty of these people in the class with quirks that couldn't be used here, but he certainly hadn't been expecting him to place in the top six. His physical capacities were shocking, and the fact that he'd actually outlasted everyone in the endurance test had him reeling, because the kid looked utterly exhausted after dawn. He'd had this look in his eyes like something he'd actually lose if he'd stopped, and for a moment Shota swore that he'd seen the fear of death in those eyes, but he shook it off. Midoriya was definitely concerning him. Just what had this child been to? Because. It was looking like his initial thoughts on the kid were accurate. He truly did look and act like a soldier. When Shota had him do something, he'd do it to the best of his abilities. He was pushing himself far harder than the other students were. It was as if Shota had threatened to kill someone dear to him if he failed the assessment. He prayed that there wasn't some villain holding someone hostage over Midoriya's head with instructions to make Shade into UA. There were several times where Shota noticed that he would wince or flinch, especially during the toe touches. Again, he suspected the kid was hurt. Though the winces were minor, so Shota doubted it was anything major. 
As kids of this age tended to have a fairly low paleo tolerance to this, then again, Midoriya might have abnormally pain high pain tolerance to this, for all he knew. But if Midoriya had gone to the hospital for anything, then Choto would have been informed. So either it was nothing serious, or the kid was an idiot who didn't get his injury treated. Not unlike a certain vigilante. Either way, unless something drastic happened, like he broke a bone or started bleeding out, he wasn't going to draw any unnecessary attention to the kid. He'd give him a slip to see Kiro after class if the kid wanted to. There was an incident. While Kiroshima had been doing his ball throw, Bakugo had been glaring at Midoriya all morning, and he finally seemed to act on it. Deku. Shota blinked at the nickname. He vaguely noted the red-haired kid, Kirishima, blinking in recognition of the nickname. The way he said that indicated it was an insult. He was sensing a history here, and he didn't like it. I don't know how the hell you cheated your way into UA, but someone like you shouldn't be here. I got in the same way you did. By passing the entrance exams, Midoriya answered back. He didn't seem intimidated by the other boy, which made the blonde even more angry. But Shota noticed the clenched fist of the corkless kid. He didn't seem scared, but there was obviously some sort of trauma there. Bakugo started to fire up his quirk as he made to throw a punch, and that was all Shota needed to see. He erased Bakugo's quirk and restrained him with his capture weapon. That is enough. I will not tolerate infighting in my class. If you are going to fight, do it in a spar. That is your only warning. He blinked and released his hold on the simmering student. They seem to have some negative history. I'll need to keep an eye on them both. And I swear, if this kid starts bullying anyone, I'll have him expelled faster than Nezu can make a cup of tea. Shota also mentally noted to talk to Hound Dog about getting Bakugo anger management classes. Finally, he showed the results. Mineta was dead last. Honestly, Shota didn't like how he'd been ogling the girls in the class. Though his record was clean, he had the feeling that someone had pulled a few strings to make it such. Said kid was now on the ground, sniveling and crying like a pathetic infant. Might have actually scared him if he'd had the decency to handle it graciously, but I honestly can't imagine this kid ever becoming a hero. His potential is zero. Mineta, head to the front desk to fill out your paperwork. You're expelled, he stated firmly, and a few students looked at him wide-eyed. You mean you were serious? Yeah, Yorozu gasped in shock. What part of last place is expelled was unclear. Shota sent her a mild glare. I have no qualms about expelling students who have zero potential. I mean, you all may have proven yourselves to me today, but if I catch any of you getting complacent, I won't hesitate to cut you. I've expelled third years before, he warned, taking no small amount of pleasure in watching them stiffen. Good. Be afraid. Let that motivate you to do better. These next three years, we're going to push you to be your limits and beyond, plus ultra style. Keep showing me your best, and you'll become heroes one day. Now go. Make sure you grab your syllabus on the way out. He waved his hands in a shoe motion as he walked away. Oh, and Midoriya. The kids froze for a moment, looking very uncomfortable. Here, you're hurt. Go see Recovery Girl. He handed over a nurse test. Right. Thank, thank you, Sensei. He bowed awkwardly before leaving Cho to grab his syllabus. Interesting. He seems to hold little faith in teachers. It's likely that no already bothered to stop the bullying before. He entered the teacher's lounge with a heavy sigh, even as present Mike greeted him boisterously. So? Do you even still have a class this year? Yes, I have 19 students remaining, he announced and several of his co-workers relaxed. You were right terrifying last year, when you came in for the first day announcing you no longer had the class to teach, Snipe chuckled. No kidding, I thought you were joking until Nessu confirmed it. Midnight shook her head. So, who'd you expel? Mineta Moniru. Shota poured himself a cup of coffee as he curled up in the couch next to his Ashi. Kid has no potential as a hero. Isn't that a little harsh? Midnight's brows knitted together in concern. We have a tough job. If someone doesn't make the cut, it's better to send them home crying than dead. Shota defended his decision, making the other man wince. I suppose I see your point. How'd the quirkless kid do? Did he pass? Midoriya placed sixth, actually. 
Shota ignored the shock that painted the number one hero's face. He wondered if the man had something against quirkless people, then, but then All Might smiled a little. Or maybe he's biased. I need to make sure he doesn't treat Midoriya differently from his classmates, negatively or positively. Shota hesitated before pulling out his tablet. Whatever he'd performed his assessment, Nesu just wanted him to record the class. Mostly it was so he could justify any explosions that occurred, but it was also to record their progress. But the kid's interesting. And concerning. Oh? Hizashi leans in closer. Concerning how? Not sure. He's... Shota paused, trying to find the right words. There's something off with him. Like he's been through... He shook his head. I'll just show you. His co-workers gathered around. It wasn't often that a kid left Aizawa Shota at a loss for words, so they were intrigued. When he pulled up the video, they heard Shota's explanation about expulsion and how one kid called him out on being unfair. A few staff members snorted in amusement at that. But then, Midoriya laughed. And just like Shota, the pros in the room felt a sh chill run down their spine. That laugh was dark and heavy and filled to the brim with something they couldn't quite name. No kid should laugh that way, ectoplasm shuddered as Thirteen nodded. It made their hearts hurt. It was so desolate. Unfair? Hate to burst your bubble, but life is unfair. You think hurricanes and earthquakes are fair? Bombings? Villains? Listen, I know you- We're kids, but that's no reason to be so naive. As heroes, it is our job to make things fair. We take the brunt of that unfairness so that civilians can rest easy and pretend that life is kind and they will stay blissfully ignorant of the pain and death we'll face every day. Shota turned off the recording, leaving his co-workers speechless. See what I mean? There's something deeper going on here. It sounds like he's speaking from experience. That's strange. Midnight's eyes were narrowed. He said, I know you're, we're just kids, but it sounded like he was going to say, I know you're just kids. Maybe you should show this to Hound Dog, Thirteen suggested. I plan to, but I wanted to give you all a heads up. I don't think Midori is up to anything bad, but it's entirely possible we're dealing with a traumatized kid here. Shota sighed as he laid back on the couch. He didn't want to deal with this. He wanted to, to expel his class again. The free time last year was amazing. Either way, he was stuck with this class for now. He just hoped that whatever Midoriya was dealing with wasn't something that could come back around and bite them all in the ass. God damn it, I just jinxed it, didn't I? Shota swore he heard the universe laugh. Izuku sighed as he made his way through the mounds of trash. He'd managed to slip away without having to socialize with anyone. He felt a little bad because he was pretty sure that Kirishima was gay a fanime boy's brother, but he was emotionally exhausted. Not only was he around Aizawa, which he was used to again because of the constant patrols as Viridian, but he was also constantly in the general area of Hizashi. He even glimpsed Power Loader, and that was hard. Yeah, she was not in the headspace to talk to people, but school was done, and he was blessedly alone. He smiled lightly to himself as he kicked open the door to his camper. Now he could- Taigo was lazing on his couch with a bag of potato chips and a laptop screaming Netflix. Welcome home, Taigo greeted. Tabata? Izuku de deadpan. What are you doing in my house? Calling in a house is a bit of a stretch, don't you think? Don't you have an agency to run? So much for alone time. They can handle themselves, Kaigo wake off. So, how was the first day of class? Pretty good. Though, I think I pulled my stitches. Izuku pulled up his shirt with a wince. Damn it, Zoo, that was almost healed, Kaigo groaned. Come here, let me look. With a sigh, Izuku removed his shirt, completely allowing Kaigo to assess the room. He realized idly this was the first time Kaigo had been able to see his entire turf so without it being covered in blood. God, Izuku, you have so many scars. Kaigo lightly trailed his fingers over one that stretched from his left collarbone to his right hip, causing Izuku to shiver lightly. He'd gotten that from a nasty white nomu. I've been through a lot of shit, Kai. 
One day, I hope you'll trust me with the whole story, Taigo answered after a long moment, and Izuku let out a sigh of relief. He was beyond grateful the other man didn't press the issue. Now hold still while I fix the damage you did by running around like an idiot. Hey, I'll have you know that Aizawa made me run around like an idiot. Only because you didn't inform him of your injury. Oh, and I suppose you have a good cover story for this? Izuku gestured to the injuries and all of the scars adorning his torso. Uh, exactly. I can't just say, Oh yeah, please ignore all these scars that I can't explain right now, so forget you saw anything. I doubt a single teacher at UA would let this go. Of course not. Kaigo shook his head. Most heroes wouldn't let it go. A 15-year-old kid with that many scars is not okay. I should probably come up with some sort of cover story, shouldn't I? I mean, if you're lucky, you'll end up in Recovery Girl's office by the end of the week. Yeah, I just hope I don't have any flashbacks, Zuma go muttered under his breath. Flashbacks? Er, I've known you for how many months now? I've never seen you have a flashback. It's different when I'm Viridian, Izuku explained. When I put on the mask, it's like I'm disassociating a bit. Like, my mask protects me. I'm not Midori Izuku anymore. I'm not the quirkless freak or useless sub-human that everyone calls me. He ignored the winds of the winged man. I'm vigilante Viridian. I'm strong and I can fight crime and, and what bothers Izuku doesn't bother the Viridian. My past can't haunt me as easily. So, your triggers don't send you into flashbacks when you're in vigilante mode, but when you're in civilian mode... Yeah, it's strange, but I suppose I'm just that kind of messed up, you know? I don't think you're messed up. I think it makes you human. Kaigo pulled Izuku into a hug. Don't ever call yourself a freak or subhuman. I don't care what other people say. Quirked or quirkless, it's who you are that matters. Hey, hey Kai? Yazu? Yeah, I'm glad you're my brother. So am I. And that was chapter 8, Suspicions of Viridium by Silver Mist Anime Lover. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, please leave a comment because I really enjoy reading those. I hope you all have a wonderful day or evening or afternoon or whatever time it is where you are. Have a nice time. Bye!